focusing in now on the HDR performance. I'm just going to jump straight into the figures because this is an OLED, not an LCD, so you don't have to consider the black depth or contrast readings. The same applies here as it did under SDR in that respect. So here you can see the monitor using its peak 1000 nit setting with the purple line, using its true black 400 setting with the gray line, and the orange line shows the Dell Alienware AW3225QF for comparison. So this test here, if you're not familiar, it has different white patch sizes, or some reviewers would call this window sizes. 1%, 4%, 9%, 25%, 49%, 100%. and 100%. So you've got a white patch covering that many pixels surrounded by pure black with the remaining pixels. So in the case of 100% white, there are no black pixels. It's a complete white screen fill and that is a sustained reading, whereas the rest are peak reading. So with a sustained reading, this was taken 30 seconds after the shade was first displayed. So you can see things are really very similar to the AW3225QF, which uses the same panel. It's slightly curved, but it's the same panel. And this is really a very typical QD OLED behavior. They're pretty consistent, actually, in this respect. So really for smaller details, so 1% window, it can achieve just above 1,000 nits and it then dims as more bright content is displayed on the screen. So for 4% white, it dims down to 886 nits. For 9%, it's down to 507 nits, so around half of its maximum luminance capability. But really, as bright shades start to become far more prominent, so 25% and above, you're looking at 365 nits or below. The True Black 400 setting is more consistent, so that peaks at 465 nits, so significantly below the peak using the peak 1000 nits setting. And the minimum recorded is 257 nits using that setting, so actually marginally higher than the peak 1000 nits setting, which had a minimum of 250 nits recorded, but this is a very slight difference. And the main thing you will notice is that 257 and 465 are not as far apart as 250 and 1010. So that's what I mean by more consistent. Now on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running the game under HDR, the monitor's running in HDR with its peak 1000, or peak 1000 nit setting. This is my preferred setting on the monitor, but again, some people may prefer the more consistent performance of the HDR 400 setting if they don't really want the high brightness, but they want less of a difference between the maximum and minimum brightness levels. So even in this scene here, I can see some definite OLED advantages. So there's a mixture of medium, dark, medium, and dark shades here, as well as some slightly brighter shades if you're looking up there. But the Perpix illumination allows it to deliver excellent depth to the little rock cracks and the shadow details, and I mean excellent depth. The medium shades are given nice depth as well, even if there are brighter shades right next to them, or medium bright shades. So it's just that level of precision which you don't get on LCDs, even ones I've used with mini LED backlight solutions. They just don't have this level of precision. This is like having millions of dimming zones. And there's definite contrast with the bright area here. Nice natural bright look to the daylight there. It's just sort of passively streaming in. The monitor's not trying to show its maximum luminance there and the game isn't demanding that it does. So it's showing this nicely. Another advantage under HDR is the monitor can use 10-bit color reproduction, and indeed that's the pipeline used for HDR10, which is the format that this monitor and most others respond to. This allows for what I like to call a greater nuanced shade variety, so there's a greater variety of very closely matching shades. It really just gives a nice natural uplift to the detail levels. I didn't really talk about Black Crush on this monitor because it's not really a thing. It tracks the 2.2 gamma curve quite well, and actually, if anything, some details are lifted up slightly more than they should be. That's under SDR, by the way. People don't always understand, but the 2.2 gamma curve is supposed to look quite masked for darker shades. But anyway, moving on to HDR, with the 10-bit color reproduction and the nice tone mapping used here, it really brings out these darker shades in a nice way, a nice natural way, because there's still plenty of very dark and slightly dark looking shades, really looking as I'd expect them to look here. Diving into the water now and considering some brighter shades or brighter to mixed content. The weather effects there, the mist over the water, show some nice smooth gradients, much smoother than you'd see under SDR. Again, the 10-bit colour reproduction coming into play here. It also allows the monitor to use its wide gamut appropriately. I'll come on to that a little bit later. But this scene here, Really nice contrast between the brightness there, the darkness there, the medium shades, basically everything in between the very bright and very dark shades. And the ball of light, <laughs> sorry, not the ball of light, the reflection of the sun on the water surface 
that looks nice and bright, really nice and eye-catching. I measured 966 nits here, although it depends how big that ball of light is. So sometimes it will go down to 640 nits or so. It's because of ABL behavior. Most of the time it's actually closer to the 966 nits. The AW3225QF, my unit at least, was slightly brighter than this. So instead of 966 nits, it went up to 1010 here and the minimum I recorded was 720 rather than 640. So not a dramatic difference, maybe just some differences with the PQ curve or how they're calibrated really. And this is just a specific example. There might be other scenes where the MSI is slightly brighter than the Alienware. It can go either way. So as I mentioned, there are two different HDR modes on this monitor, and this is covered in the best settings video. Just be aware that you want to have your game mode set to user for the optimal experience. If you set other presets, then they can filter things in weird ways and mess the image up in various different ways, including sharpness filters, oversaturation, that kind of thing. But really, user is the intended look here. Just quickly visiting some other scenes on the game. This is the one I showed you in the contrast section under SDR. The depth of the very dark shades is improved under HDR. It's just how the game decides things should be mapped. And the precision under HDR, the tone mapping precision, can really help bring out these tiny little details, which I'm afraid you can't see in the video. But they're just little, very subtle skull details. But the depth of the very dark shades there is exceptional, but there's still actually a variety if you look closely, or if you look closely in person you can see this, of very dark to exceptionally dark shades, and then some very slightly lighter or medium dark shades for the little details. So things are brought out in a nice natural way. This is the kind of thing which mini LED models will often struggle with, because there's just a greater level of precision required than they can provide with the number of dimming zones that they will have. And you don't have to worry about blooming either, as this is an OLED model. So it can show very bright shades, like around Lara's bow there, and even just if you look at the crosshair, with darker shades surrounding it, there isn't any kind of blooming. There's just an immediate transition between the very bright and very dark pixels. Another scene where this blooming can be an issue on many LED solutions, but that OLED's precision really comes into play is this scene here, or scenes like this. So there's some little candle flames. And on the video, I know it looks like there's an obvious bloomy halo around them, but there isn't actually to the eye. It really just looks sort of natural and as I'd expect in this scene. With mini LED solutions, they, they aren't able to have such an immediate transition between the very bright shades and very dark shades. And actually often the little bright elements like these candle flames will be dimmer on the mini LED solutions because it's going to have to dark bias a bit because of the medium shade surrounding it or medium dark shade surrounding it and that can drag things down. So it's not just halos you have to concern yourself with there. And even if you're looking in the background there with the little lights on the rope there and also up there, there can be some troublesome transitions on mini LED solutions if you move around and sort of change between the sky or the wall in the background and the lights. The transitions there can make the zones go a little bit crazy, the dimming zones, and it can actually cause a bit of a flickering effect. There's nothing like that to concern yourself with here. Now, this scene, it might not be the most exciting scene, but it is one which I find OLEDs particularly good at representing. Or I should say it's represented particularly well on OLEDs, and actually QD OLEDs in particular. So there's this nice... you can't really see it in the video, it just looks like a kind of ball of white but the glint on the water surface here actually has this really nice bright silvery purple outline and W OLEDs aren't able to produce this properly because they have a lower color volume. They have an unfiltered white subpixel, which means they're unable to show high brightness and strong saturation at the same time. I'm not saying this is the most strongly saturated element, so actually some elements would show this in an even more obvious way, but even little things like this on W OLEDs it just doesn't look right. It looks like there's a weird posterization effect going on because it doesn't have a bright silvery purple rim. It just has a bright core, which is kind of a pure white or a cool off-white, and it just abruptly transitions to a much dimmer sort of purple ring around the object. Whereas here it's much more nicely blended because it's able to have both the saturation and brightness at the same time. So I'm not going to bang on too much about this. I know I've, I've mentioned it in various other reviews, and it's really more relevant when I'm actually reviewing a W OLED monitor, and I definitely will mention it there. But it's just something to be aware of, that W OLEDs aren't really quite as good, in my opinion, as QD OLEDs when it comes to HDR performance, and bright saturated objects at least. 
And the rest of this scene is also shown really nicely. So there's a really nice mixture of dark to medium dark shades and some medium to bright shades, all shown very nicely. Again, many LED solutions will often have to compromise here because of their lack of precision. So the OLED here is able to show exceptional depth to the little dark cracks there, little dark shadow details. And again, there's a nice range, a nice nuanced shade variety here as well. It's not just one single dark shade. And it's able to show the somewhat brighter and the medium shades appropriately next to those dark shades. Of course, I don't want this to be all one-sided praise because that would be unfair. So I'm now on a scene which can help explore the ABL automatic brightness limiter behavior in a more specific way. So this scene, as it's displayed at the moment, there has a lot of bright shade because there's the sun in the background and lots of bright sky there. And that's filling up enough of the image where the ABL is kicking in, the automatic brightness limiter. So if you think about the graph I showed you earlier, this is where the shades will dip significantly below the peak of the monitor. So that sun there is not as bright as it could be at all. And then just the sky around it isn't as bright as it could be. If I shift things a bit so there's less of that displayed, then the ABL goes down a bit and some of the bright sky just around the map there at the moment becomes actually a bit brighter. The effects of the ABL don't just affect these bright shades though. If you look at the HUD elements, you might notice a shift there as well. And it's not just the camera causing this shift, it's actually observed by eye when I'm looking at the monitor as well. So the elements are much brighter here, the HUD elements, than they are here. And actually I can notice the shades in the background, those medium shades shifting as well, becoming brighter and dimmer. Again, that's not just the camera going weird, that is actually something that I can observe by eye. I actually spent a while on this game getting to this particular position to really show a very clear example of this. So it's not generally as obvious as this, but just to point out there are some scenes that can certainly cause the ABL to kick in rather noticeably, where bright shades start to dominate. I switched over to the True Black 400 setting and I've recalibrated the game with the in-game slider just to make sure that the peak brightness is appropriately reduced now as well, according to the capabilities of the monitor. And just to show you that things are more consistent now. Uh, and I have to apologise actually, just the way that the game shows things, those medium shades, they do actually shift even here and it's not because of a brightness shift, it's just if your character is looking at different things in the game, it sort of has a filter that changes that. So that was exaggerated because of how the game is showing it. But the HUD elements, they weren't exaggerated because they're sort of medium bright shades. And the ABL does have a noticeable effect on those. And the bright sky as well, there's not such a shift even between there and there, as I saw to my eye, at least using the peak 1000 setting. So things in general are more consistent. So some people might prefer this, but personally I like the strong brightness peaks, which the monitor can make good use of in many scenes. You don't think I'd leave out Battlefield 5, do you? So this mountain scene here, it's a bit of a torture test for OLED, so there's a lot of brighter shade here. It's not completely, you know, full screen white or anything, but really is a bright dominant scene. And here, OLED models like this, the ABL kicks in pretty heavily. And the representation of this scene overall is just not as impressive as it is on some mini LED solutions. So the sun there, most of the time in this scene, it would be around 350 nits, but it can be a bit higher than that or a little bit lower depending on the exact makeup of the scene. But on mini LED models, the sun there can be really strikingly bright, not around 350 nits bright. And the glint of light on the water surface there even can be certainly brighter than it appears here. And even the sky in general, the brightness is just limited by the ABL behavior of the OLED. That's not to say the scene looks terrible and dim, but if you've got the comparison in mind or you've actually experienced a mini LED solution on scenes like this, you might notice a difference. Back on Shadow of the Tomb Raider on another scene now, and I'm gonna talk about the color reproduction. So just to give you a quick reminder of the gamut of this model, 99% DCI-P3 coverage here and some extension beyond DCI in some regions. So under HDR, unlike under SDR, developers and content creators can happily target much wider gamuts such as DCI-P3 and ultimately REC 2020, a very wide gamut that this monitor does not fully cover. It's around somewhere around 80% REC 2020 coverage on this model. And that's actually pretty high for a monitor. Most of them don't even come that high. So what that means is the monitor is able to make better use of its generous gamut. And unlike under SDR, 
You don't get the kind of oversaturation that I mentioned. So Laura's skin, for example, it's toned down significantly. It's more natural, more as it should appear. Whereas under SDR, the reds are brought out too strongly. So she looks a little bit too tanned, to put it politely, using the native gamut of the monitor. And some of the greenish shades had too much pop to them as well. They looked a bit a bit garish actually under SDR and that's toned down under HDR. The monitor does actually use a little bit of what I'd call artistic license. So if I compare to my AW3225QF, the Alienware shows them in a slightly more muted but actually more accurate way. Whereas on the MSI, there's a little bit of extra pop, but not as much as under SDR. And I actually think the balance that MSI achieved here is one that people are going to really like because it doesn't look sort of unrealistic and obvious or cartoonish oversaturation. It's just that it does add a little bit extra. The sky, for example, that looked really quite cartoonish, I'd say, under SDR, whereas under HDR, it is suitably toned down, but it still looks kind of vibrant and vivid beyond what you'd see with the sRGB color space in mind. And certainly there are nice vibrant elements where developers want them to be. Some HDR content can make better use of this than others. It really depends if the developers are really going for those Rec 2020 colors, or at least trying to push the DCI P3 gamut heavily. It's up to the developer, but on this title, certainly there's, a, there's kind of a mixture and, and some very nice vibrant shades where they're supposed to be. So the flowers here, for example, some blues that are much more vibrant than you'd see with the sRGB color space in mind. So they stand out nicely, but they're supposed to be there, so it doesn't look weird and out of place. The dresses on these characters there as well, a nice variety of orangey browns, whereas their skin doesn't look overdone or anything like that. And the little citrus fruits here, I'm afraid I cannot capture these on the video properly at all, but to the eye, they almost look like tennis balls. They're not supposed to look just like lemons. It's supposed to be a sort of a more luminous greeny yellow than that. And it certainly achieves that on this monitor. They look like they might be slightly overdone on this monitor, but I know that this particular shade is supposed to have rather eye-catching pop. So overall, definitely a nice monitor to use under HDR. I actually spend a lot of time using HDR on this monitor. As with other OLEDs, not perfect in terms of its bright scene dominant brightness capabilities. But certainly where there are smaller bright areas, it can show really nice brightness and its contrast capabilities and indeed color capabilities shine through in a nice way under HDR as well.